President Trump's war with the media has turned into a daily, even an hourly battle. And I'm asking this question. It's fine for the president and his people to push back against what they view as unfair and accurate reporting, but how is this helping him enact his agenda? Is it bringing him any closer uh, to pushing through the uh, temporary travel ban, repairing, replacing, reforming Obamacare, getting tax cuts through the Hill? Uh, I understand that the New York Times in particular gets under the president's skin. And so we have this tweet about this uh, latest story. The failing New York Times, that's what he calls the paper, writes total fiction concerning me. They have gotten it wrong for two years and now are making up stories and sources. And Sean Spicer pushing back very hard against what he said was completely inaccurate reporting by the New York Times, says the paper should deliver an apology. And there was particularly one thing that Spicer pointed out where uh, the Times was painting a portrait of a kind of a lonely and isolated president, um, one who is cloistered in the White House, according to the paper, uh, wandering around, watching too much TV, wandering around at night in his bathrobe. And Spicer's saying he doesn't even think the president owns a bathrobe, and he certainly isn't wearing one at night. So now we have that level of detail. And this was a story that, similar to that which has been reported by a number of news organizations about staff infighting and dysfunction in the White House, about the expanded role of Steve Bannon. And clearly this has touched a nerve. But now there's another front here having to do with terrorism. When the president went uh, and spoke at the U.S. Central Command in Tampa, uh, he was talking about ISIS and the threat of ISIS around the world and said the following, you see what happened in Paris and Nice, all over Europe is happening. It's gotten to a point where it's not even being reported. In many cases, the very, very dishonest press doesn't want to report it. They have their reasons and you understand that. And I was puzzled by this because... The White House later put out a list of 78 terror attacks, and it included Paris, Nice, San Bernardino, Orlando, which got pretty close to saturation coverage. Now, it is certainly true that in some attacks overseas where there are mass casualties, uh, these don't get anywhere near the coverage that attacks on U.S. soil receive. Um, and I'm not sure what the president was driving at when he said the dishonest press doesn't want to report it. I mean, usually... When we have attacks of this kind, there's so much public interest and public anxiety and public fear that these tend to receive a lot of coverage. The president apparently feeling that the press, for some reason, he didn't elaborate, um, is not paying enough attention to terror. And he was asked about this very, these very comments uh, at a photo op yesterday. And the president didn't respond to the specifics, but said the press is very dishonest. Not everyone, he said, but most of the press very dishonest, and that he feels he needs to point that out. So the question really is becoming, uh, this worked very well for President Trump during the campaign. And it's very clear that it revs up his base when he attacks the media. But if he and his people are doing this day after day after day on story after story, does it at some point become background noise? Now, some stories deserve to be smacked down. I reported over the weekend about the Washington Post having to back off a story that also was about Steve Bannon's role, supposedly marching over to the Homeland Security Department and giving orders. There was no such visit. There was no 2 a.m. call joined by Steve Bannon. Uh, and the paper did have to kind of retreat on that after Spicer uh, also demanded an apology. There was no apology. So. All of this, what it does is, be, the reason I'm talking about it today is because when there's a new tweet, a new attack, a new speech, it takes a story that X number of people may have seen and it extends the life cycle. It means that the next day and the day after that, we in the media who love to talk about ourselves, it is true, are then talking about the attack on the story, which gives the story more prominence. So the White House has a decision to make. Uh, again, no problem with pushing back on stories that the t Trump team believes are unfair or inaccurate. But the more that it does this, the more it gives prominence to the negative stories that many people may have missed in the first place. And at some point, the president may decide to be more selective, perhaps more judicious in its attacks on the media, so he can spend more time and get more of the uh, spotlight, more of the focus on the things that he's trying to push, push through to get his agenda enacted. Uh, he's now the president. He's not running for office. Uh, he would probably prefer well, obviously, he would prefer more positive coverage, and he sees the media as relentlessly negative. But at some point, the, 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 the sh focus is going to shift to the agenda items that he wants to get through so he can accomplish something as he sees it on behalf of the American people. Um, beating up on the press is fun, easy, and popular, but it doesn't necessarily get you closer to the goal.